Let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Ah, oh, pain. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, how's it going and welcome back to the As Always podcast. This is episode 166. I'm your host James and I'm joined as always by Tyler. As always, how's it going my friend? It's going pretty good, how you doing? Doing good, happy to be here. Lots of news. This Lots week, uh, a, lo- a lot to talk about. Um, so, and I've been excited about it actually, uh, nice. for for at least a few of the things. Excited in all the things to talk to you about it, but like not necessarily excited by all the things we're talking about. If that right. makes sense. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's some hesitation, there's some worries, there's some concerns, but most of all, uh, just happy to be here. What's uh, <laughs> what's new? What's going on? Nice. Uh, you know, not a lot. Vibing, doing bits and bobs. Uh, we like vibing. We operate on vibe. We do. From memory. Exactly. So that's cool. Uh, but no, I'm yeah. just, you know, taking it easy. Uh, I've been working on some different sort of videos, which has been nice to switch up sort of uh, what I'm doing. Uh, put out a smaller video last week. Um, by the time this comes out, uh, on Max Payne 3, which was fun. It was a video that it took me like four days to make. So it was just nice to put something out that didn't take me like a fucking month. Uh, and that was cool. Which is... That's very nice. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was very very nice. And I uh, have a bunch of things planned as well for, like, videos and doing smaller stuff. I'm trying to, like, just... I, I'm trying to just, like, experiment a little bit with a bunch of different stuff and just sort of have fun with it, be a bit more creative, and then yeah. just see what, what sort of sticks. Um, yeah, okay. I think it'll be cool. So... Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. That's good. I never played Max Payne 3. It's not it's a good. game I, it's good. I ever play. Interesting. It's nice. And it only took me eight hours, so... Of work to make, you mean? No, to play, to finish. Oh, to play. It's like you just said it took you <laughs> this many days, yeah. not hours. Um, <clears throat> yeah, cool. Okay. So it's not a long game, which no, I like. No. I do enjoy that. It was very nice. It was very easy to play through, just like fun, and then I was done, and it was cool. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so when you say you've got some ideas like what you want to experiment with is there anything you haven't done before for instance um i mean it's not not really stuff i haven't done i mean it's not like totally new stuff but i guess it's like just trying something a little bit different like smaller content that's a bit a bit short a bit more condensed but also stuff on like i have a bunch of like old games that i like would like to make videos on where it's like a sort of like like one of those old games that like enough people played that they're going to be like oh i remember that game but like that not enough people played where like it's like well obviously we all know the game like you know it's like a sort of in between which i think it'll be a fun little sort of thing to do like a sort of like do you remember this game and it's like you know fun little oh that's nostalgia um so Yeah. yeah That'll be nostalgia. Nostalgia. Bro. Yes, exactly. So That's next time doing, I yeah. ever hear you <laughs> complain about someone, oh, why they have to reboot it? No one has original <clears> ideas. I'm like, yeah, mate. Well, look at your own YouTube channel. I'm not <laughs> You're right. You, I'm tell you. You're right. That's a good point. Um, um, it sells, so, yeah. unfortunately. It well, fortunately, I don't know. I enjoy it. Some of it. Um, hey, it's not. It's not always but, bad. It's not always bad. Do you know what else isn't always bad? I uh, plenty. The great people at patreon.com forward slash as always. They're not mm. always bad. Just they're not sometimes. not always bad. They're only on occasion. No. Only on occasion they're bad. But to us, they're always great. They're the Sweet Vintage Lads at patreon.com mm-hmm. forward slash as always. So if you like what you're listening to here and you want to hear, see more, head over to patreon.com forward slash as always. And for just <laughs> as little as $1 a month, you get exclusive access to the best podcast on the internet, the Clubhouse Podcast. It's powered by you, the people. It's the people's podcast. It's over 130 episodes, 40 episodes Damn. for you to stream right now for as little as $1. So go check it out. We've got amazing producers over there that make this show happen. So, of course, uh, we want to thank them. So, first of all, we have Ollie, the superior Ollie, Baron Keen, Damien, the not so original name, Ferentino, Flash Paradox, King Richard III, Oldbrick, Ryan Hefe, Viridian, and Ballsack47. Thank you, Sweet Vintage Lads, for helping power this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, James, we talked before the show for the first time in a long time about actually what, like, everything we're going to talk about. Wow. No off the Crazy. Not necessarily, like, normally we leave a room and, like, let's just talk shit, see what happens. And we will do that, no doubt. But so much has happened 
that we had to be like, okay, what's the priority here? Mm-hmm. Um, so the the three main topics of today, you probably see from the title and the thumbnail on uh, on YouTube. We have two massive fantasy television shows, epics, releasing in the next two months. We, of course, mm-hmm. are talking about HBO's Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. The premieres mid-August. And then 3rd of September on Amazon Prime, there is The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power television show with a budget of that first season of a billion dollars. Um, so... <laughs> Maybe mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's the highest budget television series of all time, uh, which yeah, is so. fucking ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. But of course, it's such a massive property that, yeah, it's just it's actually just insane to think how much they fucking spent on that. But anyway, uh, and then today, at least at the today for me at the time we're recording this this morning, uh, San Diego Comic Con Marvel had their big presentation and announced all of Phase 5, or at least most of Phase 5, and a bunch of movies from Phase 6 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So we've got to talk about all of those things. Yep. Um, we really do. What do you want to talk about first is the question. Um, I reckon we save we save Marvel for the end. We go through the... Okay. We go through... Let's go through, yeah, the, the, the smaller bits and bobs. Okay. Can we start then with <clears throat> The Lord of the Rings, The Rings let's, of Power? Let's do it. So they released a trailer for this show. They did. Um, now, firstly, they, they, they'd done a teaser trailer, then they'd sort of done a main teaser, somehow a between a teaser and the trailer. A main teaser. Uh, and that was like nine days ago, and then they had mm. the official trailer um, to, was yesterday, I should say. Yeah. Yesterday. Uh, so if you haven't got it up, James, maybe get that up so I we can sort it. of scan through it. But... I've got to ask firstly, what did you think? Have you watched the trailer? And I really hope you have because I told you yesterday. That's what we're going to be talking I about. I have um, seen the trailer. Thank fuck. Um, have you seen the trailer? What did you think of the trailer, James? Um, I thought it was a good trailer. Um, yeah. I like the tone. Um, yeah. I think it looks visually, for the most part, like 95% of it looks visually really nice. There's some bits where I'm like, I think it's the one place where, despite the budget, I think House of Dragon looks better um visually yeah um but that might Do be you? because i think lord of the rings looks a particular way and this looks a bit it just looks different in the sense well, that well you can't I think... you probably can't get away with as much with game of thrones <clears throat> is based on so much practical sets especially mm-hmm. yeah. um with like uh especially interior sets like obviously the real stuff we see through lord of the rings is mostly the scenery um yeah I, I, I think i think there's a shot at exactly one minute where you've got i think it's like like it must be like a like a dwarven king or something sitting on a throne or something from yeah. behind the yeah. set like looks pretty good but then like yeah. beh- like you can see what's clearly cgi it just doesn't that doesn't look it looks yeah. like he's sitting on a set with a green yeah. screen and, yeah like that looks weird to me i feel like there's a few i mean if you pause like it that. it looks weird i don't think it looks as weird necessarily when it's moving but i know what you're saying i just think there's something about it there's something because i think yeah. what the, C- but the shot think- before the dwarven kingdom was really good even the cgi yeah really it is good. and there's a lot of it that's really good it's just there's certain shots where i'm like oh that why does that look so off um yeah. and it's like i wonder how much of the show is gonna catch me like that or whether like when i'm in it i'm gonna be in it i mean most of it looked really nice and i think like it was tonally really good. I mean, the orcs look really good. Um, I think costume design is really, really good. Um, like, atmosphere. Yeah, it, it, like, color grading, too, I think looks interesting across, like, different scenes. Uh, overall, like, visually, I think it looks really, really nice on the whole, though. So, When you, you compare cool. it to The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit films, those two sort of trilogies obviously shared so many similarities for the same director, but also just visually because they were, they were made a bit different, um, have a different sort of vibe, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. or tone. <clears throat> Where do you think this fits in compared to those two? Do you think uh, it's more Lord of the Rings or more Hobbit? I think it's more Hobbit for sure. And I think it's do because okay. the CGI is... I, I think you, it's... I can tell like it's it's just a bit weird like I, there's also a shot yeah. at like and i know i think it's supposed to look like this but it's at like 26 seconds with a boat on it just on the water 
and it looks it's just like i think the cgi in this whenever it's a cgi scene it looks very glossy it looks there's a lot of bloom on it and i think yeah. that makes it quite noticeable that it's a cgi scene as opposed to like a real life scene because i think the real life scene you they always like the stuff that's always real uses like really real lighting whereas I, the cgi I stuff is saying. like I see it, what you're there's a lot of bloom on it there's a lot of glow and i think yeah. it's it's just like very obvious which is which I don't know if I yep. vibe super heavily with that, um, yep. but we'll see, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And from what you understand or can take away from it, what do you feel like you get away from the story? Do you feel like you know or have any idea of what the story's about from this main trailer? Well, I mean, the basic story, I would guess, that all you can really get from this is, ah, oh, the rings, where they come from, sort of thing. Like what happened? What's the, like I because to, to me it feels like they're playing into even with like the little text that pops up like discover the legend blah blah blah. It's like, you know, how does this play into, you know, the Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, yeah. Like what what is the story that led to the Lord of the Rings happening, sort of thing. Um, yeah, which seems to be what they're going for, which I think makes sense from a TV show perspective, um, while also hopefully telling a really unique, like you know individual story in the process with a whole host of characters and you know something going on there so yeah yeah I, yeah it, like it looks good okay interesting i um i really like the, the trailer i've mm-hmm. liked each trailer more than the previous trailer yeah um i feel like it's got its own vibe while probably yeah, probably more Hobbit than Lord of the Rings, but it's closer to Lord of the Rings than The Hobbit was, if that makes sense, in terms of there's a lot more practical effects. Sure. There's a lot more <clears throat> realism. I think the CGI is just downright better than The Hobbits. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, in general, obviously, I, I feel like the Gollum and Smaug, they spent so much time on those Hobbit movies that they were just done so well, and at the time, they were just done so well, so probably it's not nothing's going to be better than necessarily those two, but in general... The CG on this looks better. Um, I love the set pieces. Even just the colouring, I think, is a bit better than The Hobbits. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, and that's we're just talking visually because that's all we take away from this trailer. It does feel like Middle Earth. Like, it feels like it's the same world as we've seen. You know what I mean? It's thousands of years before, so we know it's going to be different. But mm-hmm. it still feels like it's the same world and same universe. Um, and connected, if that makes sense. I don't know if you felt that way. Um, I didn't really think about it, actually. Uh, I don't know. I'm just scanning through it now. I mean, there's there's shots. There's one at, like, 23 seconds. I'm like, that looks like Middle Earth. Um, yeah. It's, like, kind of like yeah, a yeah. shot under, like, on a river. Definitely. Especially when you see the architecture of, like, the elven kingdoms and cities. Um, yeah, you look at, like, the shot at 12 feels... seconds. It's like that. Yeah, that looks like Middle Earth. Um, there's some things that feel a bit unique to itself for sure. Um, bit Game of Thronesy when they show us some of the Numenor like slums in the docks sort of shots, what it looks like, well, what looks like Numenor, what I expect to be Numenor. Um, I really like my favorite shot of it though, is it two minutes and two seconds and three se- or three seconds, two minutes, three seconds. Let me go have a look. Um, yes. which is like Galadriel, charging in with a cavalry uh, yeah, army nice. on a field and it just looks fucking awesome i was like that's what i'm talking about like that epic fantasy you want to see in the lord of the rings or when you hear the lord of the rings you think of things like this mm. um you know you think of the, the um charge of the rohirrim the fields of pelinor the battle of Minas Tirith, mm-hmm. like goosebumps obviously this is isn't as good that's one of the greatest moments in cinema history but this, this is, you know, pretty spectacular. And it looks, again, like you watch a Battle of Five Armies. It looks like a video game. Yeah. Whereas this, like, looks like a movie with actors uh, actually doing it. Like, riding on horses and charging into battle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I... Look, I really enjoyed it visually. Um, I think the acting uh, that we saw was good, I thought. Yeah. The woman that's playing Galadriel is very good. I'm very happy with what I've seen. Obviously a major figure in the Lord of the Rings, but even more so in 
Tolkien law and literature, Galadriel is one of the most important figures. Mm-hmm. You know, she's she's a part of the most powerful, important um, elvish bloodlines uh, ever, or the the most important elvish bloodline ever. The the Noldu, like that's yeah. There's so much lore to this, no. and Galadriel's been around since the first age of Middle Earth, and this is set in the second age. And um, there's a, look, there's a lot of things they're going to make up, and there's already characters we know that aren't in Tolkien literature. And I'm just going to take the good and leave the bad with this sort of show, um, yeah. Because I want it to stay as true to lore as possible. We know they break lore. We already know that. There's there's reasons for some of it, I'm sure, because it's a show and Tolkien's stuff is it just isn't written to sort of do a show, especially with the, these stories and the and the creation of the rings and all that. But yeah, it's, uh, it's you have to take liberties somewhere when you're doing an adaptation like this. And I think the best adaptations do take liberties with the source material. So as long as it tells a good story, then I mean I'm happy. Which might be yeah. heresy to big Tolkien fans, but I really don't mm. care. So. You know, that I have no stake in that at all. Um, I just want it to be good. <laughs> That's really all I want. There's a Tolkien... Um, well, there's a lot of Tolkien fans that are unhappy. There are what seen it. a lot. But I've also... Yeah. But I've seen a lot of comments, and I'm sort of like, I don't think a lot of them are Tolkien fans. <laughs> like, I'm right. like, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Some of the complaints I've heard. And mm-hmm. I'm like, That's why would you be upset by that? Yeah interesting yeah or they're assuming things like like i don't like that that's going to be sauron i'm like maybe it is sauron maybe it's not i don't know but also sauron's a shapeshifter that's what he did he could that could just be one form we don't know it also could might not be sauron the balrog at the end looked fucking incredible um oh yeah it looked really cool that that was some really good cgi that looked really good the balrog yeah 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 that was pretty um, good yeah oh yeah that was very spectacular. And, f- you know, just f- that felt like, okay, that's a Lord of the Rings moment. A fucking Balrog. Mm-hmm. You know, the servants of Morgoth. And they, we're going to see Morgoth, and we're going to see all that shit in, like, the flashbacks. Like, I would start at the same we start Lord of the Rings. That's how I'd start the first episode. Have a Galadriel narrated uh, prologue about the first age and lead us into this. Mm-hmm. And you can see, you know, the, the, the creation of the Silmarils. And <clears throat> we obviously saw the trees in Valinor in the last teaser uh, before there was sun they were like the light of the earth and yeah that's how the Silmarils were created There's, it's a fuck it, read the Silmarillion I would recommend if anyone's interested but uh we're gonna see that sort of explanation so because that'll be the backstory of Sauron because Sauron Amaya was a servant and the main servant of Morgoth um mm. and the first age ends when Morgoth dies and this is set in the second age and the rise of Sauron and creation of the rings and the, and, the, and the one ring. So I think in this season, we're not going to see Numenor fall. We're not going to see the rings actually created. We'll probably just see sort of thoughts and plans of it and Sauron we'll beginning to we'll plot. We'll see thoughts. Well, I just mean like That's there'll it. be the, the hints, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like hints to it. Yeah. Um, but I, I am curious to see like they've spent so much money and they're obviously going to see this through and it's going to be successful. The marketing campaigns they really just started, and I just reckon they're going to go super hard with it. Because mm-hmm. I've seen this trailer everywhere now for the last twenty four hours. Every time I try to watch a YouTube video, this is the ad before it. Yeah, I'm like they're probably going to go really hard with the marketing. I'm sure it will do very well for them. Yeah, will it make them a billion dollars? No, that's mental. Um, but it'll do well, yeah. and. I wonder how many seasons they'll do. I'm just really curious. I'm like, how far do they go with this? This is not one off. We know mm. this isn't going to be everything. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. And I think that the show has every chance of being successful. And it's going to be successful with the mainstream, regardless of what Tolkien fans say, as long as it's good. Because mm. that's all that matters to you know mainstream people. As long as it's good, it'll spread by word of mouth and people will be like oh this is like the new game of thrones you know people will just like get involved well, and really enjoy it sort of thing yeah. so yeah 
yeah, hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's just oh, good. You know? I'm just going to enjoy the hype and talking about Tolkien and Lord of the Rings. You know? <laughs> That's what you could do these days because nothing's good. <laughs> yeah. It's all, yeah, it's except true. for Thor, Love and Thunder. That's good, though. That is good. So, I'm so glad you're on my side with that. Yeah, no. People don't know. People yeah. don't know. Yeah. Because last podcast I talked about it and people were calling me stupid. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I mean, you are stupid, but not when it comes to Thor, Love and Thunder. No, I agree. I agree. There's definitely things that, you know, um, I've, I've said that's dumb and stupid. Not a lot of things. Mostly a genius. Mostly always right. Um, but, yeah, you're right. And uh, Thor, Love and Thunder, one of the great movies of all time, I'd say. Of all time. Honest, so. Of all 100%, 100%. time. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say it's the best action drama comedy of all time? Yes. And I don't mean like as a combination of three, I mean like individually or three genres. Oh, it's the top of all three, yeah. Easily. Yes. Yep, yeah, Easily. Yeah, yeah. 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 Also, I'd say it's like the best romance film I've ever seen as well. Yeah, it is the best romance film I've ever seen too. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> the best romance film I've ever seen. Yeah, I think Incredible. so. Incredible. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you mentioned another show just before, and that's Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones has a new show coming out. Mm-hmm. It does. In a matter of weeks, House of the Dragon, the prequel to the Game of Thrones series, set, I believe, 300 years before the events of Game of Thrones, and the Dance of Dragons uh, war that happened, um, with which involved... Uh, pretty much a Targaryen civil war. One main figure being Daemon Targaryen. And is that Matt Smith that plays him? It is Matt Matt Smith. Smith. That's my boy. Yeah, Yeah. and he looks great in this. Uh, (laughs) They all look great in this. James, what did you think of this trailer overall? I thought it was fucking brilliant. I loved it. It was just this... I don't know whether I'm getting my hopes up and I'm going to be disappointed, but like, it feels like the best of Game of Thrones without the bad, you know? And I'm just... Yeah, it does. I'm just so ready for it. I miss Game of Thrones so much. Um, I'm so ready for the show, and hopefully it fucking slaps. Do you know what's funny? It feels like after Game of Thrones finished and so many fans were disappointed, I feel like at least 50%, it was at least a 50-50 split with people that enjoyed the show and people that didn't. Mm-hmm. And I'm on the side where I feel like at the time I liked it and justified it as best I could, but over time it really was a disappointment. And th- and they'd already had development before the, ge- the show had finished that they were making a bunch of spinoffs and this being one. And I think when this started, you know, the news started coming out with, oh, they're filming, oh, it's actually happening, oh, it's going to come out in like a year or a year or two. Everyone's like, mm, I just thought this is going to, bo- who cares? I don't want Game of Thrones. I'm still salty. But yeah. then you get closer and closer, they show more and more, and by the time this last trailer dropped, you were looking at it like, oh my god, this feels like Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Like, early days Game of Thrones, but with the budget of the later seasons. Yeah, exactly. And the performances look great, you got the, ex- it feels like the Game of Thrones shows, like the vibe, like, you don't need Dan and Dave there, clearly, to make it clearly. feel like it's, um... That they clearly weren't what made it Game of Thrones in terms of that tone. The sets, there's familiar places, familiar families and names, and uh, I think it it looks fucking spectacular. I mm-hmm. feel like this is going to be whether it's as good as Game of Thrones, I don't know, but I think this is going to be the most successful spinoff of all time. I'm going to call it now. Mm-hmm. I think there's been a lot of good spinoffs out there. I think Mayans was a great spinoff of Sons of Anarchy. Better Call Saul's obviously insanely popular, and everyone I talk to that watches it loves it. Yeah. Um, so obviously a very successful spinoff. I think this is going to outdo it. I don't necessarily think it'll be as good or as culty as Game of Thrones, but I think it'll be one that most people that watch Game of Thrones, most people, like three quarters, will watch this show, and it'll be a week-to-week talked about, looked forward to show for years to come. I really yeah, do. I hope so, because I miss that. It was so much fun, and it's fun with a show that's a show and not a Disney Plus six-part series yeah. that's not a real yeah. show. So yes. it's going to be so fun to have that week-to-week you know, new episode comes out, sort of feel with, you know, like it was for Game of Thrones. It's just going to be great. I'm so yeah. fucking ready for this. Yeah, me too. Me too. And then only a couple weeks after, 
the Lord of the Rings comes out. So I don't know wow. what I want to do with this. This is um, this is a lot. I don't like that they're coming out at the same time, but also I do because it's yeah. two great shows. And uh, as long as they're not on the same day, and I can have like, I hope one's on like a Monday, one's like a Thursday. Perfect. Like you start your week, one of the shows towards the end of the week. Oh yes, got this show to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Uh, the new episode, and I just hope they're both really good. Yeah. I hope they're both really good. I hope so. I think Game of Thrones has a better chance of being good. Yeah. Um, but I think The Lord of the Rings will also be good. I've got, not high hopes, but I've just got hopes that they're going to be good enough that we'll all like them. Whether mm-hmm. or not they're like game-changing is only time will tell. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I feel like for for HBO, look, with 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 something like a Game of Thrones property, I feel like they can't afford for it to be not good. You know, like I feel like if you've put all this money into it, you're making this thing after, you know, a final two seasons of a huge show that was so divisive, you kind of have to make sure it's like good, right? I feel like you can't just like. You but know, also, I feel like that's what every fucking company does. I don't think any companies are like. It doesn't really matter whether it's good, does it? You know, but now HBO like we really need to make sure this one's good. I feel like every they always everyone wants it to be good. I guess so, but I feel like some executives don't really care. They're like, just green light it. It doesn't matter. Well, I I think some executives think they know better is what what it is. Right. I don't think it's... They they just think their their idea is the one that's going to be right. Right, yeah. I I think that's what it is. I think they they think their idea is the one that's going to be like, yeah, it will be good because it's my idea. Mm -hmm. And I know what the people want and I know what's going to make money. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to, you know... We, we need to rush this shit. We need fucking tits and ass and Daenerys and Jon Snow fucking, you know, like, need that's what we need. That. Yeah. We need as much of that as possible. Um, and, uh, yep. and just more dragons, more killing, and then just, you know, make the good guy bad at the end oh, for no yeah. reason. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, don't explain it and then kill her. <laughs> I know she was the main one. I know she was the one that you were like, oh, she's going to do it. Just fucking kill her. Three episodes before she was the chosen one. And it's like, it's a worse turn than Anakin Skywalker in Revenge of the Sith. It's more dramatic. A shift. Um, oh my god. And just have everyone, you know, suck her dick the whole time. All the good characters you like. Lose all respect for them at the end. Because they're just all over her. Fucking Game of Thrones. And ev- everyone's in love with her. Oh, I hate that Tyrion was in love with her at the end as well. Like, that's such... He just became such a cuck. He did. he did. Like, of all people, you cucked Tyrion at the end. It was so weird. He's... I mean, all the characters seem to get really odd from Series 5 on, especially Tyrion. I think Tyrion. Jon Snow's the like... only one, I believe, because he always was a little bit of a cuck, but still cool. I feel like he that was always, like, he never went off script, I felt like. Yeah, what he was, was always like... all right, I guess. <laughs> I guess. But I did yeah. feel like, especially... Wait till like, he comes back, mate. Wait till he comes oh, back. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. We're getting the Jon Snow sequel where he comes back yeah. for another another adventure. Can't mm. wait. But he, he won't just be um, fucking uh, in the north because that would be boring. He has to come back again and they give him a reason to come back. And he's like, and he has yeah. a rematch of the Night King. Oh, it's like Obi Wan. It's the Obi Wan Kenobi show. It's the rematch of the century. He spends like the whole season doing nothing, and then he just yeah. has a fight with the Night King, and it's cool. Then mm-hmm. Arya kills it again. Yeah, well, I hope so. I hope so too. She flies and, across Winterfell. But before that, com- yeah. But before that comes off, you have to see uh, Arya's spin-off show as well. Oh, of course. That'll be Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it wouldn't make any sense, dude. No, but what makes it even better, I've got a better idea because I know it sells. You don't uh-huh. want to spoil, you don't want to give us Arya, yeah, you want that to be a surprise. So we'll do Arya's backstory to that moment after Jon Snow's oh, spin off. That's even better because then you can build up to the origin of the dagger she uses. Yes, exactly. She exactly. gets so, it from a side character that doesn't yes. matter. Yes, yes. and, and, and I, there'll be no tension in her dying because you know she lives. Oh, that's going to be you know, so you can't, good. You can't have people being nervous. We're not cruel. We want them to know the hero's going to live, of course. Yes. That's what Game of Thrones was built on, after all. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's a good idea. I think that's going to sell. I think we're going to make... Yeah, it's, as the kids call it, cutting the tension, and we're going to cut the tension. Yes. Yeah. 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 Genius. Yeah. Like a knife through butter. Um... <laughs> 
So that's Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, excited. Cool. Excited. Yeah. Me too. Me too. I guess that gets us into the main topic of this episode, my friend. Mm-hmm. Um, Marvel Studios. Marvel. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, um, for many years, for over a decade, <clears throat> we had an incredible, as what's now called the Infinity Saga, but an incredible franchise of films that for the most part were just bangers. We mm-hmm. got the Captain America trilogy. We got Iron Man. Off it for God's sakes. Yep. We got the Avengers. We got Guardians of the Galaxy. We got a lot of cool things. Thanos, Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, Thor. You know. Mm-hmm. Black Panther. Great Good. stuff. Great stuff. We've now entered phase four that apparently is now over or at least ends at the end of the year with Black Panther. We're kind of forever. We'll get into that. Oh, yeah. Now, phase one ended and we saw the Avengers unite, right? It mm-hmm. built to this Avengers movie and we thought, was that it? They just sort of wanted to make an event movie that these movies built to. That's pretty cool. Love that. It's all in the same universe. Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk. Black Widow, Hawkeye, great. Then at the end, it reveals this great threat, this villain, Thanos. And you have this thought of like, oh, is this building to something bigger? And then it continues to build and build bigger and bigger towards one end goal of an event of two Avengers films, Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm not mistaken, James... I feel like this phase that has now been dubbed the beginning phase one, I guess, of the multiverse saga, as it's been called. Mm. I just don't know if it's done anything. Yeah, me neither. Am I wrong? Or has it not done anything? Yeah, it's an interesting It's done things... But like it's, it's done, done things. Things, for- things have yes. happened. Things have happened. But things have happened. There's no disputing that. No things disputing that. have only happened. That's yes, yeah, all yeah, yeah. that's happened. No things. disputing that, James. Things have happened. Um, it's uh, a lot of. I've seen people say that this phase is only a reaction to Endgame. That's what it is. It's like showing the fallout, the reaction, like what comes off the back of it. And I think that that will be a fine thing to say if that was what happened in any of these things. Um, but it's not. Some of them it was, but not all of them. Some, some, and it's sometimes it's vague. Um, like Falcon and the Winter Soldier was all about the fallout of. Poli- it was the political and. Yeah, there um, are there are some elements. You look at like Wonder Vision. You look at Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Has you know, there's a lot in there too. Um, but beyond that, not really. Like it doesn't really deal with that um, in most of these things. Like Loki is a complete separate story that's to set up the multiverse. I mean, there's like three different things that set up the multiverse separately for some reason. Like as if yeah, its that's origin is three separate things. It's like, oh well, yeah. actually, it was you know they do it in a bit in Doctor Strange and Spider Man, but also it was in Loki, and it's like yeah. why, what, which one was it yeah. then? What created the multiverse? Yeah. I don't understand. And the multiverse felt different in multiverse of madness than it did in no way home and it was with the same character three months apart yeah like, yeah and also i feel wandavision did like a little bit of it teasing little bits here and there and you've got it teased it but i can't it didn't actually pull the trigger on it you can't <clears> put that on that sure yeah sure um but that you could also say far from home teased the multiverse you literally used the words multiverse in it. Yeah, they did. I think it's it's one of those things, and I mean, they did a bit with it, you know, in Endgame too, where they were like, yeah, well, look, when you when you go back in time and you do this, it branches off, and like, you know, it's that sort of like introducing it. But I think it's been a bit odd in that they've introduced it a bunch of times, but in so many different ways that it's a bit weird. It's like, wh- like, what are you trying to solidify here? Like which one is the cause and like which one matters or are you doing it multiple times because you know some people are only going to watch the movies and aren't going to watch loki like what do we i just don't 
I don't really understand what they're going for here. And outside of those things, you know, you watch Moon Knight. What the fuck was the point of Moon Knight? I just don't know. I haven't know. seen Moon Knight. I didn't it, want to watch it. It's so weird, man. I just don't know what they're doing here. And it's it's yeah. it's strange because you look at you look at a character like Shang Chi, right? That movie was a good, solid film. It wasn't anything like yeah. sp- super special, but it was good. I thought it was, I thought um, it was really good. I yeah, really it was, liked it. It was just like a solid movie. It had great characters, and Shang Chi is a good hero. I really like him. Um, and so it's but it, but it's like we're gonna get all the way to Avengers fucking the Kang Dynasty, and we've not had another Shang Chi film. And it's going to have been like four years, and it's like, wh- wh- is he just going to like show up cameo in something else? Like, which one is he going to cameo in? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. It's just like, wh- like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, I just don't. Under- yeah. You don't have room for any of these characters to mean anything to us as the audience when, like, you don't give them room to have films. Like, we had three Iron Man films before Infinity War. Plus, he was in every Avengers movie. He was in Captain America. There was uh, so much room to build up him, but then all the other characters too. They all had their time. Um, whereas with it feels like with this, like they're introducing new things, and then instead of doing sequels in Phase 5, they're like, let's just do new things again. And they just keep building yeah. and keep building and keep building, but they're building out instead of building up. And it's like, wh- where where is the depth to any of these characters? Like, we're nev- like I cannot see Avengers at the end of Phase 6 having any sort of impact that infinity war or endgame had um because because every character's had one film build yeah. up to it and rather than between seeing them again five well. characters having like nine film build-ups you've got 50 characters with one film or show build up. exactly it's shallow like you're gonna have the deaf chick from hawkeye come in and save the day at one point <laughs> in the avengers movie and you can be like what like, like, was that like, again? like i don't yeah, really was know i was supposed to give a shit about that they're like oh my god do you not see echo you fucking because <laughs> like, like most of like... most of echo as well is like oh we've got we've, we're cameoing fucking this is where you know daredevil's, daredevil's gonna show up, up in echo and it's like yeah, then is it I gonna know. become the daredevil show like yeah. when we're supposed he, to be fleshing like out wiggle. echo he's a fucking oh, greg god. from the wiggles yellow oh yellow my suit. god dude yeah <laughs> i hate this so much i just don't know i don't know oh <laughs> I'm going to become a daredevil uh, stan account for this new show. Um, <laughs> it's my favorite thing to just bother daredevil fans now. Oh my God. It, yeah. All of this People feels have... so weird, dude. I'm looking, I'm looking at phase five and I'm like, blade sounds great, but like, what's the point? Like, I just yeah, don't, why? I why blade? like, why are we doing that? Like, why blade? you got iron heart, which is like, you know, maybe that'll be interesting. Um, Riri Williams is in Wakanda forever. So that'll set her up, I guess. Um, yeah, you saw a, you even saw in the Wakanda forever trailer that Ironheart you do. Heart yeah. Have it out. Yeah. That was very, very, very obvious. Um, uh you got then you got like you wasted time on fucking agatha coven of chaos like what the yeah, fuck are we doing <laughs> what is going on marvel you need to stop uh, man a spin-off a spin-off <laughs> level characters uh <laughs> a spin-off level character had a villain that's getting a spin-off oh my god yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like i literally topic. don't care i don't yeah. care about her yeah, at yeah. all what well, i don't need yeah. to know what her fucking prequel story it yeah. doesn't matter and now do i like agatha and wandavision yes yeah but in wandavision you know not exactly here. i don't need I don't it to be more. the protagonist of a prequel what is happening <laughs> I just don't understand this. I know. It, it's so weird to go from a total 180 to what seemed like the greatest plan ever created in, in cinema for, like, blockbusters to to what is, like, a hot mess. Yeah. Like, they obviously knew what was why it was working, or at least we all thought they knew exactly why this is working, so just keep doing that. And then it's like, let's go fucking crazy. Yeah. And I think a lot of the TV shows harm the whole formula too, because uh, yeah, I really thought be... the TV shows would be a big win for Marvel, and I don't yeah. think they have. Yeah, I, I thought that too, but it's been it's I think it's done nothing but harm the entire MCU, and it's it, 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 the MCU used to be so focused and so condensed, and like because they only had a certain amount three movies a year, you know, at their height in 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 phase three. 
um, before that less, it was like you had to make sure you were telling a meaningful story for the character, throwing in all of your setups, but in a way that like worked its way into the story too. Like it always made sense. Like you look at Age of Ultron, it sets up Wakanda and Vibranium. Well, I mean, obviously they set up Vibranium before, but like the, the fact there could be more of it and like Wakanda and Black Panther, but and and like you've got Claw in there too, but. It, it works its way into the story in a way that made sense. It didn't feel just like a gratuitous, oh, Black Panther, you know him from the comic books. It was like, it made sense. Like, every time they did a cameo or a reference or a setup, it was never like this epic moment of, oh, you know him, right? You know this. Re recognize the thing. It was always like, you know, it works into the story in a way that, like, builds out the universe in a meaningful way. Now it just feels like just everything is like let's do lots of fan service because people love to recognize <clears throat> things and they're, they're not giving these new characters enough time to have a great deal of depth um which just <coughs> sucks because the the old characters were so well written and so well realized and it made infinity war and endgame hit so hard because you love these characters i don't care about any of them like i like some of them but when we get to avengers and they're all in it i'm not gonna care because yeah. I haven't had enough time with them. The only characters I probably care about are like, you know, Sam and Bucky because we've had them before. Yeah. Um, and Thor, well, obviously. Yeah. Well, that's what I was about to ask. So what characters do you think they've, they've done or are doing well within this phase or this, this saga, I should say? Is there any character you're like, look, I like where they're going? I'm going to have to have a look at phase four again. Right. Here we go. I've got it. Um, let's see here. Phase four. Um, I mean, Shang-Chi is good. Okay. Where does he fit into this? <laughs> don't know. <laughs> I don't think Marvel knows. He just got a movie. He's a new hero for this phase. And, like, they've showed us movies the next three years. His movie came out last year. So the next four years, is he not getting another movie? Why? Yeah. Like, this is the annoying part. I'm like, they're f just have less characters and do more movies with them. Why are they doing so many? There's not one sequel in the same phase. Yeah. It's over really like three weird. years or even over two phases. Like, this should have been, if you're doing another Thor, tell us now. If you're doing another Spider Man Sony, so they don't get to announce <clears> that. It just is what it is. People are like, this. The Spider Man's coming out in that one of the, whether it's, it's Spider Man's coming out in phase four. Yeah. Let me just say that. They did, did because, they not and I'll tell it, you exactly. No, or, I'll tell you exactly. Or, or, that it was announced by Sony before they showed their slate for Phase Four, right? Well, you've got July. What have you got? July, the Marvels in twenty twenty three, November eighth, twenty twenty three, Blade, and then the next thing's May, and then after that, July Thunderbolts. Usually, you have those are the main three Marvel releases. So, is there room for Spider Man there? Maybe a December again. Like they did with No Way Home. Maybe they like that December window mm -hmm. for Spider-Man in 2023. Uh, maybe they wait a little longer to do another Spider-Man. Maybe it's like 2024 December. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But Spider-Man's in there somewhere. 100% there's another Spider-Man in there. But yeah. but that's for, so that's for Sony to announce historically. I mean, the only thing we've had phase phase right, and this is what I'll give them, <coughs> and, this is, and, and it's not just because I'm biased, and I am biased, we had Falcon the Winter Soldier in Phase 4, and he's got a movie in Phase 5. True. So that's the only one so far that's got sequels. That's Sam Bucky. So I don't think it's a coincidence you've just said Sam Bucky when you had a property with them, and then they've got a sequel in this phase. Yeah. Loki has a Season 2, sure, but like you said, what has that got to do with the greater thing? I mean, I think Loki will fit into a, into a lot, because obviously he, he had a lot of multiverse stuff, and it's called the Multiverse Saga, but the Marvels... You had Miss Marvel, I guess. Yeah, I've not seen it, but and I haven't seen it yet either. I heard it's really good. We'll we'll watch. I have Miss Marvel. Good. Probably will never watch it. Moon Knight, um, and obviously Monica and um, WandaVision. So the Marvels, even though I didn't like the first Captain Marvel, I'm actually excited for because there are a few characters I really want to see in it. Mm -hmm. and I was a big fan of Monica. I mean, Ant Man. Let's go through this in order. Let's go through this in order. Yeah, and we'll sure. just say a quick word on them. So the first... So we've got Black... Okay, well, let's actually start with the next movie to come out. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Trailer dropped. What did you think of the trailer? I thought the... Overall, it was, like, fine. I thought the first half looked really cool. 
Um, I liked it visually, and I liked what they were doing there. Uh, and then, you like the vibe? I liked it was the quite vibe. a vibe. It was I a liked vibe trailer. The vibe. Yeah, I did like the vibe. There were some really nice shots too. It was like quite nice looking. And then the second half was just kind of Marvel action, and it doesn't do anything for me without any context, to be honest. Like I'm yeah. so I'm so numb to like CGI action sequences now. If you're gonna do yeah. it, you know, you gotta give me some depth. So I gotta wait for the film to come out. And it looked very feel, like you know something. The way it was shot felt very intimate. Like, there was some, like, it felt very dramatic. Like, the cl- just the way they did close-ups, those emotional close-ups mm-hmm. and the lighting with them, I just felt like, I'm like, that's not a Marvel movie at all. Yeah, the first like, half of the Like, those shots, really nice. like, you watch second from 37 seconds in and the two shots up into, like, f- uh, 41 seconds. Let me go get it. Of King T'Challa's sister and mother. They have, like, those close-ups. And just the way it's shot, I'm like, that doesn't feel like a Marvel movie at all, hey? Yeah. It just feels so raw. Yeah, it looks really nice. And, and we know it's going to be emotional because, obviously, Chadwick Boseman, the actor that mm-hmm. plays Black Panther, has passed away. Yep. And how do they handle that? How do they handle that? It's going to be interesting, I suppose. I think I mean, it looks really good. I, I get what you're saying. There are some definitely marvel bits, but it is a Marvel movie at the end of the day. Yeah. But I do I, think the way it's filmed, is, it feels like, once again, they've <coughs> given some directorial freedom to mm. this movie, where it's definitely got its own style in the way it's filmed that's unique to itself. Yeah. And I think, like, you know, Wakanda is recognizable. I like Wakanda. I like the characters from Black Panther. So there's yeah. that element of, you know, familiarity that now it's building upon, you know, something that already had a really good foundation. Um, so it's, you know, how well do they add to that? How well do they build on it um, and give me something to really care about? Because, yeah, like, yeah, I like Black Panther, but it's been a long time since Black Panther. Um, so I feel like you kind of got to you got to make me care again um yeah and if you can do that really quickly at the beginning remind me why i cared about black panther in the first place and then tell a meaningful story with those characters then you've got me and i think that that'll be that'll be cool and i mean black panther the first one was great um other than some like obvious issues in there but um i think you know you're only going to learn from that and i think there's no way this movie can't be better than black panther i don't think you know as good as black panther was and as much as like it was a special film I think there's so much room to make a better film off the back of it. It wasn't like this perfect masterpiece film. It was yeah. just like yeah. it was just like great. And I think that it make yeah. it means that you know when you're making this one, I think you can do you can do more. So I think there's yeah plenty of room for this to, you know, be a better story and a better film. Obviously, we don't have Chadwick, um, but how they handle that is going to kind of be everything, um, and we'll see. But overall, just like pretty good trailer. I you know. Nice vibe. Now we we Good. saw the Black Panther suit at the end of this trailer. We did indeed. Um, what are your feelings, thoughts there of that? And where does that fit in? Um, I don't know. I guess it's, I guess it's, I guess, I guess we're going to get a new Black Panther. That's yeah. about it, right? I don't know. And it's going to be it? his sister, know. right? It's his sister, surely. I, I don't it, know, man. I can't, I can't tell from that shot. Yeah. I feel like... Be. The synopsis of the film is about all the different main figures of Black Panther, like side characters, sister, mother, mm. girlfriend. Um, what's the dude's name? Like, there was heads of one of the other tribes or whatever. One of the other groups or the... Shit, I don't remember. And he's in... M'Baku. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, the synopsis said it focuses on them and dealing with the fallout, I guess, <coughs> emotionally, po- politically, and with threats to Wakanda from um, uh, King T'Challa dying. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think the fallout of King T'Challa dying will be the whole base of this movie. That's why people think they can move in and attack Wakanda. Um, I think... It'll be all of them together as main characters, and I think someone at the end, assuming it's going to be his sister, will take up the suit. I feel like that'll be like the end, end, end of the movie. I don't think we'll see that suit until the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that makes Out sense. Out of respect. 
give it the time, give it the movie to mourn and then make it a really cool, built up, worthy thing at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I reckon that makes sense. That's my feeling. Um, All right, let's go through phase five now. February 17th, 2023. We're not not talking about She Hulk. Attorney at law, you know, you don't want to talk about She Hulk. What do you mean? I I forgot about She Hulk, to be honest. Well, Daredevil got his first cameo in the She Hulk trailer. Did with he? His, with his yeah. yellow suit, yeah. I forgot about that. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. What really did you think cool. of the She-Hulk trailer then? Oh, I didn't see anything but that one clip of Daredevil. I don't know what happened. Oh, no. I saw the I saw the full trailer. Oh, It that's... is actually Attorney at Law. It is actually Attorney at Law. Why they've made um, Bruce such a fucking... Like, his hands... He's Hulk again, his arm's not hurt from the Infinity Stones, and he's now training a Hulk cousin that's a lawyer. Oh, the CGI looks so bad. Why is he like this? Even is Hulk looks doing this? weird, man. I mean, obviously it's because it's a they... Disney Plus show, but like... Does oh he? I thought he just God. looked like he did in the, in the movies. Oh, he looks weird. The lighting is not bouncing off him very well. It, it, uh... He looks weird. She looks way worse, though, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, she doesn't look great. Oh, good God. They had a lot of built assets already off of Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, I guess, to use. Oh, um, God. Stop with the Disney Plus shows. Make it end, please. Oh, good God. This looks terrible. Yeah. I don't Wong, care. Wong's in it. That's a cameo that's in the trailer. Really? Let yeah. me see that. So, the, so this uh, will be towards the end, about two minutes in. <gasps> Poggers! Um, yeah. I'm she soy Hulk. jacking so hard. She-Hulk Attorney at Law yeah. is a real Marvel Studios show we're seeing. Yeah, well, Tyler, what you don't understand is it's in the comic. So, shut up. All right? Yeah. You ever thought about that? Yeah, I, I guess I haven't thought about that until you've said it now. So yeah. I guess I'm now thinking about it. And it makes it good. Yeah. It does yeah. make it good. It does make it good. Um, wow. Yeah, this is so weird. I it's... hate that they've given Daredevil the fucking red and yellow suit. It's another one of those, oh, comic book thing in the thing, in the movie, in the show, because it, it, because it was in a comic once, not because it actually looks good. It's fucking yeah. stupid, man. Now, do you think that... I think they'll have like a suit everyone will probably love come his own show but i don't think they want to reveal that suit just yet so they're like let's just put in other cool suits in all the cameos until we show you his main suit i think what you could have done is just not put him in it (laughs) at all yeah to be honest with you but there you go they have to put a cameo in there somewhere i guess Mm -hmm. i can't believe we're gonna see fucking charlie cox's daredevil against she hulk they're gonna be next to each other i don't want that i literally don't want it Yep. I don't want it. Fuck Marvel. Yeah, I know. Well, I don't think Charlie Cox and Daredevil are worthy to be next to She-Hulk, personally. <laughs> She-Hulk is so much better! <laughs> yeah. She's my favourite character. Well, Marvel Studios made She-Hulk and she's canon, and they've just sort of cucked to the fans that like that shit Netflix show. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's what they've done. So that's where we're at with that. She-Hulk... She Hulk, Hulk Attorney at Law comes out Amazing. August seventeenth. It's streaming, so check it out. <laughs> oh God, please! I think no. that you'll get Game of Thrones, Test the Dragon, and then the next day you can watch She Hulk. Oh What's, my I don't, God! I don't even know where Daredevil is in this trailer. Right at the end, after the title card. Oh, I didn't see. That. Oh, I didn't see that. It's it's a post credit well, scene. Haven't, I actually haven't seen that. Out. <laughs> I just saw screenshots. I was like, where was that in the trailer? Yeah. Oh, wow, they really put him in. That's so fucking funny. I can't believe the first time we're seeing Daredevil in the MCU, full suit and everything. He's wearing a shit suit, and it's in She-Hulk. They really just, like, said, fuck you, didn't they? That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's funny. I love that they did that, too. Oh, and people are going to be mad in the comments, being like, well, James, James, what do you mean the suit shit? It was in a comic book one time. What the fuck do you mean? That makes it good. It's good when it was in a comic book. I mean, everything in a comic ever was good. Marvel Zombies is going to be sick because it was a comic once, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I, I, no one's excited for the Zombies one, though. They cannot be. I refuse yeah. to believe anyone's excited for Marvel Zombies. Get the fuck yeah. out. What the hell is that? 
I hate zombie things at the best of times. Boring. Oh, damn it. I, I cannot imagine being like just being like, oh, yeah, I'd love to see a show where it's a cartoon and it's all the Marvel superheroes, but they're zombies. Oh, so cool. Like, what? <laughs> that's not fucking cool. Like, do you is your brain falling out of your ears? What the fuck? <laughs> Are you a fucking zombie yourself? What is this? <sighs> Jesus Mate. Christ. Mate, that's fucked. That's fine. God damn it. All right, phase five then. Yep, all right, phase five. Let's go through it. Starts yeah. next year, February 17th, 2023. Ant Man and the Wasp <laughs> Quantum Mania. It's yeah. the third movie. In the Ant Man trilogy, yes. we saw a poster. We've obviously got Ant Man, we've got the Wasp, and we have Ant Man's daughter. Hell yeah. Who's now, um, you know, apparently a superhero. Yeah. Um, problem with Good. this how um and i don't have a problem with it in the sense of i love it i have a problem with it okay you tell me your problem with it first my problem with it is that we didn't have a disney plus show to set up his daughter before this came oh, out. And so I that's a great point i've realized that i don't care about it but i'm gonna obviously watch it three times anyway so yeah that that makes sense um, but what's sense. what's your problem with it or not problem well, with it well look I, I, I'm just trying to think and I haven't done the math here right so we mm-hmm. get a poster for it Ant-Man's yep. in it Wasp and Cassie mm-hmm. um, Emma's daughter Paul Rudd's daughter what's Paul Rudd's what's um, Lang fucking Scott 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 um, Lang, Scott, yeah. Scott, Scott, Scott Lang. Mm-hmm. and I do like that Kang's in it I'm like okay clearly this is a part yeah. of whatever they're setting up yeah. um because Ant-Man, for some reason, has such importance in the overarching storylines of this fucking universe. Yeah, it's an um, odd one, but I kind of like it. Yeah, he had so much to do with, like, yeah, Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp mm-hmm. in setting up, like, Civil War and then also setting up Infinity War. Mm-hmm. And uh, Endgame, I should say. And now he's setting up Avengers, uh, Kang's dynasty. Yeah. Um, Incredible. So that's hilarious. Um, but, yeah, and then Kang's in the post... I'm excited overall because I love Ant-Man. Mm. Mostly I love the first Ant-Man and the second one's forgettable. Um, but I love Paul Rudd and I always have a good time with them. So it'll be good. I love that Cassie's suit is purple, obviously. That's that's one thing I like. Mm-hmm. Now, if I remember correctly, Ant-Man came out in 2015? Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. After this this movie's set in what would you say 2024 yes like the snap happened in 20 like 2018. happened in 2018 and then 2023 five years later mm-hmm. they're back and now there's been a bunch of movies since i can't imagine him in the wasp quantum is going to be all at the same time as spider-man dr Str- you know what i mean time's passed here right probably yeah so let's just say be generous say 2024 so that's nine years wow now cassie didn't get snapped that we do know Mm -hmm. so she's nine years older than however old she was in ant-man which i'm pretty sure she was four that's what just (laughs) what i'm throwing out there right can we just address that she can we just address that she was like what five or six i don't know no no how old was cassie and ant-man bro she was well she had a birthday didn't she yeah exactly i don't know what i haven't checked this she was born in 2007 so she's 17 i guess so July 19th, 2007. And we're being generous here. She's 17. Let's say... she. Yeah, I would imagine they're going to say she's 18. But look at this girl in the first Emma movie and tell me she's not... At most, six. At most, six. Yeah. You're probably right. It's a load of bullshit they've made up. She was born in fucking 2007. <clears throat> Look at her in, Ant- in Ant-Man 1, dude. Uh, how old is the actress? Let's have a look. The first one. The first actress. I don't know how to find her. What the fuck's her name? Cassie. No, the actress. Uh. Oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, let's see if I can find her. Uh. 
She I was forgot born. Sam's oh. in Ant Man One as well. Sam is in fucking Captain America's in Ant Man One. Oh yeah, he um, is. Um, this the actress who played Cassie in Ant Man One was born in March of two thousand eight, so she's one year younger. Okay, all right. Okay, so what? She's at most seventeen, right? Yeah. I just feel like I don't know. I don't know. It just feels weird. Seventeen year olds on a fucking superhero. It just feels hey, Spider Man. Yeah, she's not. Cassie's not Spider Man. Let's not fucking get it twisted. Miss Marvel. Yes. Okay, Miss Marvel. That's yeah. fine. It's okay. I don't know. It just feels weird to me. I don't know what it is. I was like, this girl's been. Surely she's too young. Maybe I'm wrong. They're just loving these. They're doing a lot of these kid characters. They aren't are. They? Now that it's I think about this phase, like they're setting up. Feel- they're, I was going to say Young Avengers, but it's almost like they're setting up Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, of course. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to have Cassie, but also the Wasp and Ant-Man there. Yep. Um, Yelena. What the, what's the point of Hawkeye then? Because he wanted Kate Bishop. Um, but where she show up? Phase seven, I mean, she's... man. Stick around for another ten years. We'll get there. No, all right? I actually know where we're going to fit her in, but we'll get to that. We'll get to the one good thing this thing this this thing has going for it <laughs> later. Um, <laughs> we all know what it is. Um, okay, Emma and the Watch Quantumania. Yeah, um, it'd probably be good. Probably good. Yeah. Okay, Spring twenty twenty three, Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion. So I love Samuel L. Jackson playing Nick Fury, uh, Ben Mendelsohn playing Talos. Uh, team up in a conspiracy thriller where Skrulls have infiltrated Earth at the highest levels. Um, at San Diego Comic Con, Cobby Smolders described a show as a guessing game between humans and Skrull. Amelia Clark and Olivia Coleman also feature in the cast. The series will be that's by. sick. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. That's Beautiful. a good cast. I. Uh, I. That's I hope it's. Cast. I hope it's good. I mean, I think that's a show that has the potential to be good, right? Like I. I, I think of of you know disney plus things um i feel like that has a potential to be good yeah i don't know i have no expectations probably won't watch it i think mm. i hope it's good i i, I don't know i think normally it's i look at these Earth, shows though. and things and so I look is at- it like the story of how nick fury left and went to space is that what it's about as a prequel Oh shit! Is it? I that's don't know. What I'm yeah, that's oh, what I'm saying no. to you, bro. In that that's case, fuck it off. I don't care. Yep. Cool. Oh okay, no. We're the same team. Next up, May fifth, twenty twenty three, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, directed by James Gunn, the if, final Guardians of the Galaxy film. If Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three is bad, I cannot tell you I, the atrocities I, I will commit. Yeah, I, this is honestly a big one. This has to be good. Because if everything else is bad, you're like, well, this is just shit we don't know. But if they ruin Guardians of the Galaxy, bro... Oh, there's no way. Please. I'm out. I'm it's, out. It's, I can't do look, this anymore. It's, it's James Gunn. Then they're not going to change things too much. Unless he's, like, <clears throat> just, like, a complete idiot now. You know? No. Then no, he can't be. He can't it's, be. It's got to be good. I mean, he had a win with Suicide Squad. I haven't seen it, but everyone loved it. So yeah. I feel like, you know... He's gonna come back and do, release it. And I love Guardians both 3. Guardians movies. I love both Guardians. Yep, movies. they're both fucking brilliant. Um, I think this has got to be a home run. There's no way it can't be. This has got to be. Yeah. this is. A safe I don't need bet. it to be better than one and two. I just need it to be on par. Yeah, just be different and as good. Um, yeah, and you've 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 got it. Um, safe. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a safe bet for a good film. And they're characters we all love, and it's a goodbye to the team. So I'm just really. Yeah. I'm I'm just hoping it's just a great. Good time in its own right, and just be yeah. it just does nothing but try to be Guardians of the Galaxy. That's exactly, and that was that was the strength just of the very yourself. first Guardians and the second Guardians yeah. is that they weren't oh this is an MCU thing let's set up this and set up that and do this cameo. It was just like the big strength of Guardians one was that nobody knew who the fuck they were, and they yeah. made people give a shit. And I think that's what made it so good. So if you don't lose touch with right. like that core part of what made Guardians work, then I think it's you know it's got to be good. And I, I don't think I think this is gonna be good. I totally agree. Uh, Summer 2023, Echo, the Disney Plus show. Why don't you tell me your thoughts on fucking uh, Maya Lopez, the Hawkeye villain, um, Mm -hmm. and her spinoff while I go get a drink of water. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you tell me, everyone, what you think of it. All right. Guys, listen up, all right? Echo, I think, is going to be a show 
I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty safe to say. Um, I, 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 yeah. Look, I don't care about this. Um, this isn't. This isn't something I. I have a great deal of yeah care for. I guess it's Daredevil's gonna be in it. Um, but I'd honestly rather he's not because it's when you have these characters coming in, it takes away from you know what should be a, a character story. And I feel like if you make it an Echo show honestly actually you know what don't make it i think actually would be the better option to be honest with you but uh um yeah i can't say i need like i don't feel like i need these spin-offs for like villain characters i don't really understand what the point of that i is. don't know what the point i don't know what the point of this is um, yeah it's you know they're gonna do <sighs> daredevil they're gonna bring in kingpin probably again and they're gonna be like look there's things happening and i just like yeah. i just don't like i don't know man I don't know. It's not. I don't care. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. Um, also, around that same time, not long after, probably like the week after that ends, Loki Season 2 premieres. Oh, my God. They don't let us rest. Marvel, yeah, please. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Loki Season 2 drops. Oh, um, God. Well... And hopefully that's some returns, of course. Hopefully that's not as shit as season one was. Yeah, season uh, one was. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't call it shit. It was just fine. I would call it the worst piece of television I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hopefully it's good. I don't know, man. I don't know what to say. Yeah. It's. Uh, I have no expectations. So I have no care, really. Yeah, it's one of those. I love things. Owen Wilson. I'm looking forward to him being back. Yeah. We all love Owen Wilson. You True. can't. I know, we, yeah. If if nothing else, the show had Saving Grace had Owen Wilson in it. Yeah, wasn't um, was it the ending of season one was like everyone <laughs> forgot or didn't know, and Loki was like, "Oh bloody hell!" and everyone was yeah, like, "Who's he's in the fucking you?" No, he's, he's just in a different universe. Right. I want the show to just be season one again, but in a different universe. Cool. Me too. Thanks, like Sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. July twenty eighth, twenty twenty three. The Marvels. Pog. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about this one. I actually am sort of keen. Yeah, I think so too. I, I don't know why, but I do... I'm looking forward to it. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Well, you've got Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, and uh, Monica Rambeau. Yeah. Two out of three of those characters are great. Um, do that with that information what you want. Um, mm -hmm. And we get a movie out of it. Hell yeah. That at least have had some build up over a couple of different things, even in this phase alone. A couple of different things. Yeah. So fingers yeah. crossed. I think there's a running then, theme here is the things we're excited for, the things that build on build, you know? Rather than just They're not these just like things. Echo where it's like, why? Yeah. We don't need this at all. Yeah. And I think as well, yeah. the weird thing is when it's a film as well, I think it's easier to care. Like, if you look Definitely. at something like, you know, I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead here to make this point, but you look at something like Ironheart, it's like, it's a series, it, I just don't care. But if it were a movie, it just, it just feels I'd be like, like, okay, this means a, something, you know? Yeah, it being a show means it doesn't mean as much. Yeah. That's that stigma. It's literally that's exposition Less. backstory to yeah. maybe be used at some point. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's the movies feel like they mean something, but then you also feel like you have to watch the shows because otherwise... You're gonna miss something, and it's in the movie. Yeah. I just don't like it. It's like homework for movies. Yeah, I agree. It is I agree. like I don't, I don't, they they can they can fix it. They can over the next couple of years fix it up and be like, okay, we're doing this wrong. Let's try a different approach to it, yeah. and it could become good again. They've got the track record of being good. That I'll give them enough chances until they sort of can see the shit right. I really yeah. will give them a few chances here. Yeah, I, I, I and I so. can look back and say, look, the multiverse saga was shit, but maybe what happens after, be like, oh wow, this is actually good again. Yeah, um, it's like when we don't it's know. like when the Kenway saga ended and the Ancients trilogy was the greatest thing to happen to video games of all time. Don't you think? Yeah, I agree too. November 3rd, 2023. <laughs> Blade. Yes, comes Blade out. is coming out. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I don't care for Blade, really. Blade is one of those ones where I'm like, shit, maybe that should have been a series and not a film. I don't know. 
Because I, I, I can't, sort of agree with you. Is Blade going to be in Avengers? I just don't uh, know. No. Maybe like, Thunderbolts? Maybe. 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 Yeah. Hopefully anyway, it's good, though. I mean, Blade I is an really... interesting character, so it's, you know. I don't even, know much about Blade. It might be a fun one off. He has blades. I know that. As he well. does. He does have blades. Mm, That's so true. He has blades. Um, mm. We mentioned a couple times so far Ironheart on Disney mm-hmm. Plus. The show comes out fall 2023. Yeah. Another um, another kid based superhero. That's true. Man, we're definitely getting Young Avengers, aren't we? Yeah. And it'll be six so. months after Avengers 6 comes out. We're going to Avengers 7. <laughs> <laughs> Avengers Young Avengers. Oh my God. Yeah. Avengers, comma, young. That's what it would be called. <laughs> Avengers, uh. comma, young. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Avengers, uh, young, game. <laughs> yeah, young game. Young game. That sounds <laughs> weird. Start game. Avengers, start game. <laughs> um, uh, and then to end out 2023 in the winter, we have Agatha, Coven of Chaos on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. I can't wait. That's going to be so good. The WandaVision spin-off series will follow Catherine Hines' Agatha Harkness character. Wow. Is it a prequel or is it not a prequel? Does it say? I we don't know. No, we, I was, we don't uh, know. I always assumed it was a prequel, but... Yeah. You don't know. You, wow. I think it'll be a sequel, just because you think it'll be a prequel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we go on to 2024 and look... I think 2024 is so far the best looking slate we've got. <laughs> really? Um, there's three things. There's four things in 2024. Wait, is there? Yeah, there's four things in 2024. But phase six starts in 2024. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes, yes, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now okay. we have the first thing is Daredevil Born Again. 18 episodes confirmed. Charlie Cox is back. <laughs> Disney Plus. Clearly, 18 episodes, it's like, okay, this is a TV show, TV show. You'd think. You'd <laughs> think it's not an 18-episode movie. No, um, each episode is 10 minutes. You, that's the only thing that could make me happier and than I am um, right now. They release them week to week, 10 minutes, 18 episodes. If they do that, if they butcher the show, I'll become a Daredevil Born Again Stan account. <laughs> I'll suck at sticks so hard. The more everyone hates it, the more I love it. I'm like, this is oh so good. I'll God. never watch that Netflix bullshit. This is perfect. Oh, man. It's the best show I've made. Um, it's just my favorite thing to fish for bait on Twitter, I think, over the years. Yeah. But how do you feel about... You're a Daredevil fan. How do you feel about 18 episodes? Charlie Cox, Daredevil Born Again. Clearly not a season four of what came before. Clearly a new beginning for the character. Yeah. But as we understand it, they're still canon. What happened before? Is that true? Maybe. I, don't, I just don't know. I think this show will probably give that like context it's a multiverse like, it's a multiverse daredevil to be i honestly think like i think the events of the netflix show are from a different universe but those events maybe still took place in this universe sort of thing so it's like what happens in this doesn't actually affect the netflix stuff directly but also like the netflix stuff kind of informs this show almost in a way i feel like that's the only way I can think of it making sense. Um, but it could just be an entirely different Daredevil. There's every potential that that's the case. Um, yeah. Where there's some, like, varied differences with, like, this is a variant. And there's similarities. And maybe some stuff happened the same way. But overall, it's maybe... Um, it's maybe di- a different Daredevil. I'm not really sure. But, um, yeah, I mean, 18 episodes. Is it very interesting? Um, that's a lot of episodes. I mean, a lot of... Uh, traditional television shows were like you know 20 episodes um, yeah. of like a lot of older TV shows so it's kind of ve- it's very traditional sort of show you look at some of like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. those were like 22 episodes a season um, yeah. so you know it's uh, it's an interesting one and I think that 18 episodes to me sounds better than 6 so me too me too um, it's more encouraging so yeah i mean uh, for me the the sort of good spot would be between 10 and 13 i reckon would be like the solid that's your good yeah. amount of episodes for a show each one's an hour long uh, yep. but you know 18 is better than six um so i agree i am 
interested, but I'm not excited. Um, yeah. We'll see. We'll see about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, then comes May 3rd, 2024. Wow. Captain America, New World Order. Captain America, New World Order. Captain America 4, Sam Wilson has a shield and is now Captain America. Mm-hmm. Why do we think it's called New World Order? Well, the Captain America... Well, this is also one of the ending points of this phase, right? Then you mm-hmm. have the Thunderbolts after this, and that's the end of phase five. As it currently stands, it will change, no doubt. Um, look, Captain America 4, this is a big movie. This is a huge movie mm-hmm. in the MCU. Captain America is one of the two biggest superheroes of this franchise. Mm-hmm. You know, Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, they're the two main characters of the Infinity Saga. Mm-hmm. Endgame was pretty much about just the two of them, right? Like, you had all these characters, everyone was in it. and they all, But they were all side characters to those two. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a point where the main act is happening and everyone gets separated and then there's a point where the only hope and it's just Tony and Steve together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> that was... They're important. And yeah. the Captain America movies were always really important too. Probably more important than the Iron Man movies in the sense of how they connect to the greater story and like the Avengers movies. Yeah. I mean, you look at the Winter Soldier... And how that followed up with Avengers 1 and the universe with S.H.I.E.L.D. And a bunch of side characters and Avengers that were played a part in it. Mm-hmm. Nick Fury, Natasha Romanoff, Sam Wilson, yeah. Bucky Barnes, and of course Steve Rogers. And then you have Civil War, which is a Captain America movie, but also felt like an Avengers movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, where Steve is the main character. Because yeah. that's still feels like an Avengers movie. Um, and I think even if, you know, Captain America 1 was still a very important film and set up a lot of elements that played a part in the Avengers film as well. So what I'm saying is I expect this movie to be similar. I think this will be... It, this comes out 12 months before Avengers, the Kang Dynasty comes out. I think this will have a huge setup to it. Mm-hmm. I think this will have a lot of characters in it. I think this will be a very big movie. I don't think it'll be Civil War level with the amount of characters, but I think it'll be more than Winter Soldier. And yeah. just even looking at the logo, bro, mm-hmm. even just staring at that logo, being like, Captain fucking America's got a movie. Again, Captain America 4, Captain America New World Order. It gets yeah. my dick hard, bro. I am so sick. excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. To have Sam Wilson as Captain America. Why is it New World Order? I just expect it to be major world politics. Um, related as they always are I'm hoping Winter Soldier-esque levels Mm -hmm. that's the vibe I'm hoping for I'm hoping for Winter Soldier vibe with a Sam Wilson character twist like his flavour of his Winter Soldier moment Mm -hmm. because he's already been set up as Captain America you know what I mean like we don't have to have that moment that happened in the Falcon the Winter Soldier which I loved I know some people didn't I loved that show oh yeah it was great and it did a great job setting up Sam Wilson as Captain America. There will be, I'm sure, some politics with you know, him being a black man as Captain America, as Falcon Winter Soldier was. I think it needs to. Mm-hmm. New World Order, yeah, I think it'll be just some major politics that will lead to an Avengers team-up moment at the end. Hell yeah, team up, epic team-up moment. Let's go. Not like a team moment in the movie necessarily, but I mean like that's what it'll set up to the Avengers movie that comes to 12 months later, but I will think that I do think there'll be quite a few cases. And I think, I think Hawkeye's in it. I think Kate Bishop's in it. I think Elena's in it. Bucky's obviously in it. Um, I think there's quite a number. I think us agent will be in it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think Zemo will be in it. I think Zemo will be in a post credit scene cause he's going to be in Thunderbolts, but I don't right. think he'll necessarily be in the movie as a plot point. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, yeah, I think there's going to be a few things that uh, happen in it um, with a lot of other characters too as well. And, you know, um, 
Sam will obviously have Bucky at his right hand, hopefully. And I just all I need to see is Sam be cap, and I want my boy Bucky back too. I just want the boys back. I just want mm-hmm. my boys back. That's all I really need, James. I need the boys back. Yeah, yeah. It's very exciting. I'm looking forward to Captain America. Uh, nervously, because obviously it's you know it's not the Russo brothers. Um, it isn't the Russo brothers. So it's you know different. But Julius Onar of the Cloverfield Paradox fame, which isn't much fame. That's with the yeah, respect. that's concerning. With the that's the classic respect. Disney though, going ah oh, this this director or this writer made a terrible thing. Let's get them on board for our thing. Oh no, yeah. the thing is bad. We didn't yeah. see that coming. Why did yeah. we hire the guy that, that is writing the Flash for DC to write Obi Wan? That was uh, what a fumble on our part yeah. there. Yeah, I don't know, mate. Fucking Disney. I don't, I don't know. But um, Captain America: New World Order. The people that wrote Falcon Winter Soldier are writing this, at least. That's good. Um, that's good. Um, like writing is really what matters, you know, more than the director. Yes. To be honest. You could- agreed so um, although crossed. directing does matter for an action film like captain america because a big part of what like the, the flavor and the character of those films was the russo's action in winter soldier and civil war so that's there is true. that element that's lost but i think as long as the writing is solid then that matters more to me anyway especially for a character like captain america um so um yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to captain america uh i think it's probably gonna be good yeah, we hope we all we all hope so. Yeah, cool. yeah. Does Chris Evans make a cameo as old Steve Rogers? I think no. Okay. I think I one day, that. one day he will be in it at some point, but I don't yep. think in this one. Okay, cool. I agree. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. But I think it'll appear at some point and we'll talk yeah. about that in a second the final phase five movie is july 26 2024 thunderbolts which is thunderbolts. sort of like the suicide squad bad guy team up movie oh, i assume yeah. the lady hydra madam hydra will be the like nick fury character of this you're gonna have your elena your zemo your us agent characters like that and obviously All my they'll favorites be, these characters will play a part in captain america for a few months earlier so there'll be a bit of setup to this i think in that yeah. movie, to this movie. Um, what are your thoughts on Thunderbolts, James? Uh, it's another one of those ones where, like, I'm not super familiar with it, but it then I wasn't familiar with the Guardians of the Galaxy before I watched that, and so I can't really use that to judge it, I suppose. I think if it were a Disney Plus show, I'd immediately be like, I literally care about literally anything in the world more. But because it's a movie, I guess I'm kind of like, ah, you know? could be good yeah you know it doesn't um, take long to watch i'll just sit down in a fucking cinema for a couple hours and then it's over if yeah it's good it's good if it's not then i don't care yeah um you mentioned before before we move on to the next phase phase mm-hmm. six the russo brothers know they filmed action i watched on friday night the or saturday night last mm-hmm. night the gray man the russo brothers new movie with chris oh, right, yeah. Gosling. i thought it was fucking awesome Really? Okay. Interesting. I loved it. I, I did it see great. a little little trailer for it on a YouTube ad yesterday, and I was yeah. like, "Ah, oh, looks, you know." Yeah, cool. it's really good. Like, it's just a like, it's not some insane movie. It's just, it's an action movie. It's just a cool yeah. fucking action movie. And the Russos know how to direct action, man. They we know do. That. They definitely they do, do a great job with it. Ryan Gosling's awesome in it. Chris Evans is fucking amazing in it. Nice. He's the he's like the bad guy and and he's such a cunt. Like my, cool. I watched it with my parents and my mother was screaming like fucking kill him. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like go cap get him. Oh sorry, force habit. Like I'm like rooting for him. <laughs> Mum was getting really pissed off at me because she's like he's the bad guy. He's not fucking Captain America. I'm like he's Captain America. <laughs> so it's a Russo brothers movie with Chris Evans. He's fucking Captain America and and all you oh, can shut the fuck up. Um, and he's the, obviously the good guy, and whatever Ryan Gosling's character is trying to do to protect that little girl, he needs to stop, because if Chris Evans wants to kill them all, then he's obviously in the right. Definitely, yeah. They obviously did something really bad. Um, oh, must have done. But yeah, go check out um, The Grey Man. Uh, but yeah, Phase 6, November 2024, we got three announcements for Phase 6, and a bunch of empty dates they'll haven't really said anything about which you expect things like shang chi potentially spider-man 4 nah in there. man all new stuff let's go yeah. cool <laughs> maybe a thor movie in there but probably not um 
But we have yeah. November 8th, 2024, Fantastic Four. I'll tell you what I don't give a flying fuck about. <laughs> Is this bullshit movie? I Who am, cares? I love the Fantastic Four. I remember their cartoons as a kid. I am looking forward to Fantastic Four. Um, I just really, 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 really hope that John Krasinski is not fucking Reed Richards because I, I hate it. I hate that that, that would be a thing in like the main universe. I think it's like, yeah, kind of cool. Like They did a little reference to the little fan cast, but there's a reason something is a fan cast and not a real fucking cast. It's because fans don't have a fucking clue. And you need real I'll tell you what that we got right. Ben, the fan, the fan casting of Benedict Cumberbatch for Doctor Strange was tremendous, though, to be fair. <laughs> was that a fan cast? Yeah, dude, that was a fan cast for you. Really? Way before. Yes, dude. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Well, that was a, that was a fan I, cast. I think, I think after seeing John Krasinski in Multiverse of Madness, I have absolutely no desire to ever see him step foot in the MCU ever again. Um, I, I, so you know what? Cool. I love John Krasinski. I love him in The Office. I love A Quiet Place in the second one. Oh, yeah, I he's good he's in fantastic. a lot of things, yeah. I think he's great. And I wanted him to be. Reed Richards in all the fan casts and I was like well, that's, this is a great idea oh I did too I and was then, on board and with then, that and then, yeah. and then after seeing the Multiverse of Madness I'm with you I don't want him to do it no I don't think no. it's for him I don't think he needs it go do your own thing man you're a great actor um, and a great director yeah. I don't want him I yeah, don't want yeah, him involved yeah, yeah. In this. stay away from it yeah, so it, from, it didn't work. It just did not work in the Multiverse of Madness. No, I did it not get. Work. I did not get Reed Richards, Mister Fantastic vibes at all. It was like it was just John Krasinski phoning it in. Like I didn't yeah, get it, yeah, there. I agree. I agree. Um, I hate to say it, I not agree. In it. Um, it did, I didn't feel his heart in it either. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I am open to give me some, give me some interesting now, new casting. Now you, not you say choices. that though, you say that though, but mm-hmm. you, he's gonna be Reed Richards, isn't he? I don't think he is because. They talked about this, about him come back, and Kevin Feige was like, ah, oh, because it was an alternate universe, we decided to have a bit of fun with it and do something the fans okay. will recognize. Okay, fair and enough. And so I'm, I'm like, to me, I'm like, okay, we he hope. gets it. You can't have him be the main one. And I also don't yeah. think John Krasinski would want to. I think they just paid him a big check to be, like, in a short scene. And he was like, fuck it, why not, you know? Yeah, okay. But I don't think okay. he'd want to commit to, like, the future of the MCU. I can't see it. But I don't know. Yeah. We will see. We will see. But Fantastic Four is an important film, I suppose, in Phase 6, because Secret Wars is obviously famously a story focusing a lot on Reed Richards and Doctor Doom. Um, yep. So you would think Fantastic Four sets that up for the um, uh, the sixth Avengers film to come very soon yes. after it. Well, well, yeah, six months later, May 2nd, 2025... Avengers the Kang Dynasty. This will be the first part of a two-part conclusion to Phase 6, a la Infinity War. Yeah. I don't really understand how Kang... Kang th- these two things don't connect. Like, this doesn't make any sense Yeah, to so six months... Let's, let's address it as a whole here. Because yeah. six months later, November 7, 2025, Avengers Secret Wars comes out. So six months, we're having two Avengers movies. Yeah. This thing you know used what? to build up to, you're just doing two Avengers movies six months apart. No breathing room at all. We'll need a trailer by the time this Avengers movie ends. We'll be like, all right, the a post-credit scene just needs to be a trailer for the next one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What the fuck are we doing? I uh, I accept a year. A year's one thing. I can do the two part, a year <laughs> apart. Especially okay. for a big conclusion, right? Yeah. Yes. But we Look haven't earned this. a conclusion it's six years after Endgame, no, not ten. This is this is this should be your Avengers one because that's the yes, amount agreed. of build up you've done. Um, agreed. So, but okay. So this is my th- theory that I have had yeah. on this. Is okay. I don't think these I wonder are, if it's these, the same. Thi- yes, okay. I wonder. If it's I don't think these are. Me. I don't think these are two parts. I think they're two. Yes, I agree. Separate stories. Me too. Me too. Characters. Me too. I think the exact same thing. I think that I think makes exact way thing. more sense. One is one's more like a multi base. This one one's is more space based or space earth-based? based and earth based. I reckon Secret Wars is your Fantastic Four, Spider Man, Captain America. America. You combine yep. those together. Kang Kang Dynasty is more you know low key. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Low key. That okay. sort of area. The Marvels. Of w- what, where do they fit in? I I would probably put them more in Secret Wars. 
Yeah, um, see, I'm with... Dude, I am with you. I was literally saying to Harlan before we jumped on the podcast, I was like, I don't think they're the same. I don't think it's two parts. I think they're like... The only way it makes sense and I'd accept it as six months apart is if they're actually like yeah. two parts that maybe lead into a third part that meets them somehow, you know what I mean? Like a real conclusion. Mm-hmm. But it feels like... We, and we talked about it years ago after Endgame. We're like, I feel like they're yeah. going to not have one storyline now because there's too many characters. They'll have like two, like an Earth-based story and a space-based story. But now they're doing it. It's the multiverse saga. So maybe yeah. it's like the more fantastical multiverse stuff. And then you've got the post-Endgame New World Order Secret Wars vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, so. I think so. Secret Wars surely links to Secret Invasion, which links to the Marvels. And then you'd also assume if it's political, it's going to be Captain America involved and and those other Captain America s characters like uh, Black Widow, like uh, Bucky Barnes, like a Hawkeye. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then in the Kang Dynasty, I feel like you're going to see the Guardians. I feel like you're going to see Thor. I feel like... I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think... I, I do think... I mean, Secret Wars... I mean, like I said... Fantastic Four plays a large part in Secret Wars in the comics. Um, you got Doctor Doom is a big part of that, and I mean Spider Man was in it. Um, there's oh yeah, Spider Man's in these. So I think that yeah, Secret Wars. I think yeah, I just think the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars are two completely separate things. I don't think it's part one and part two. I think they're completely separate films um, that cap off. I think they. But I, what I would say, and this is where where I think they're doing with this, is I think this is a completely different structure to phase one to three i think phase four to six is a phase one i think that's probably what they're doing here is that Mm -hmm. they're just everything is longer and bigger at this point and i think they're doing three phases to basically do what they did with phase one in that it's a lot of setup and then they've got two avengers movies to cap off two separate storyline threads and i don't think these are going to be infinity war endgame sort of films i think they're going to be avengers one i mean bigger but I think that's their role in Phase Six. I think, and then I think you move on. And I, I don't because I don't think we're gonna see the big, big, big end to the multiverse saga at the end of Phase Six. I think it's gonna continue on past that, unless I'm completely wrong. But it just it just doesn't feel like there's no way this can be the ending to a saga. It's not been yeah. long enough. Look, um, I mean, we're only in 2022 now. Yeah. This is three and a half years away. Maybe by then we'll feel different. I don't True. know. True. It's still not been very long, though. I, don't I agree. I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with that, but I just think we may feel different. Maybe. Potentially. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I do just feel that this can't be the end of the whole multiverse saga. Because it just doesn't only, feel like it. I don't know. The only good feeling I have was, recently, Ken Feige came out and said... Or not recently, like maybe six months ago, maybe a year ago, that he and some execs went on a work trip for a few days, like a conference, to iron out where all the Marvel movies were going. And it sort mm-hmm. of felt like, okay, I felt like you were just throwing things at the wall and trying new things after Endgame because you had some breathing room to do that. Mm-hmm. And now you're like, and then you had that moment of, okay, where are we really going here? And that's what they've sort of announced here. So my hope is that we're getting back on track now that Kevin Feige has kicked himself up the ass a bit. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. I really hope so, because I don't want the MCU to be bad, man. I not that the MCU, I don't think the MCU know? has been terrible or anything. It's definitely the worst it's been. Like, just it's I just loved been Thor. Weak. I love Shang Chi. I love Sp- No Way Home was fucking tremendous. Yeah, No Way Home some, obviously the best thing ones. we've yeah. had. There's been some really strong things for Marvel, yeah. but then there's just been things that you're like, why are we doing this anymore? Yeah, I think Marvel Moon Knight. Used to what be... in the fuck was Moon Knight, dude? Internals. Yeah. I for- keep forgetting that even came out. Eternals, I keep forget- what yeah. the fuck does Eternals have to do with anything? <laughs> what well, does that John have to do with anything? Snow away or something. I don't remember. And that's how we're getting that Game of Thrones sequel show. Ah, of course. That makes so much sense. It's actually part of the MCU. Yeah. <laughs> and thereby yeah. Stranger Things as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Elsa. Well, uh, that's everything because we're all in Hawkins always. <laughs> exactly. Oh wow. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think the MCU used to be consistently, if even I'm if it was a flop. Winona, like... <laughs> and they're Winonans. <laughs> oh God! Are we both Winonans? That's a good question. Are we both Winonas? Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a really who's good question. Real who's the real Winona? Yeah, but not Winona, Winona. Winona, Winona. No. Correct. Right? We, we, yeah, exactly. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, not Winona, Winona, but Winona, Winona. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Makes it's a lot a more sense. important right? distinction to make. I think it's need. I think it needs to be said. It does. One hundred percent. I think it needs to be said. Um, I'll say this: the M and the Wasp Quantum Mania poster does look pretty fucking cool. Looking at it, like yeah, bit Power Rangery though, I guess. But yeah, a little bit maybe, but it's alright. I can't believe Air Man has a film trilogy. So funny. Paul Rudd has a superhero trilogy. It's tremendous. At like yeah. 60 years old. It's fucking awesome. I love it. He's not actually 60, but you know. Yeah, I was going to say there's no he's, way. <laughs> he's like 55. Isn't he? Really? Paul Rudd. Um, he I just feel good. like he's been around forever. I feel like he's been around for... He's 53. Wow. He's 53. I mean, it's not that old, is it? It's not that old, but it's not... <laughs> It's not young. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not young, but it's also like, like 50 is like, I don't know, these days, I feel like, you know, 50 is still like... Paul Rudd's just one of the nice guys of Hollywood. You know, he's a great comedian, always seems like just a nice guy, really wholesome, funny. He mm. seems like he's got his life together. He's had the same wife who's a screenwriter since 2003. They've been married. It's been, tw- they've been together for 20 years. Like, he's just one of the good guys. Yeah. You know, like his son's old, you know what I mean? Like his son's an adult. Yeah, that makes sense. He's yeah, 53. That's, yeah, I know. But that's just like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Um, it just feels so strange to think that um, Paul Rudd, who just seems like he's probably got kids, but they're like eight or 10 maybe. I was like, no, it's he's Paul yeah. Rudd hanging out with his grown ass man son. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, Paul, you look so young yourself. Even though I know how old he is, I know. I, that's why I'm like, I don't mean I'm just sick of saying 60. I just mean he looks amazing. He looks like he could be 40. But it feels he like he's just been around forever. He was in Friends for fuck's sake. He's, yeah, been, wow. he's been big for 30 years almost. He's had a career. Yeah. We love Paul Rudd. We love Paul Rudd. Um, we absolutely love Paul Rudd. I do have a question though. What? Yeah. Th- not that I really care, but what the fuck happened to Armor Wars? Did that get cancelled? Oh, I don't know, but I think it's gone. Yeah, it's not here. <laughs> so not. that's quite I'll sad. Armor Wars. Yeah, not a thing. We're gonna get, we're gonna get Rhodey, and now he's, it's it's gone. Um. That's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 Um. Well, I mean, that's ev- that's everything. That's the that's all the way up to phase six. We've been through all it up all. To phase six. We've been through it all. I'm sure there'll be plenty Bloody of new additions and randoms. Whatever, like villains in, um, the new season of Loki. We'll get a spin off that'll come out at some point in oh, there as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, well, all of this stuff yeah. always moves around. Like, you look at the slate for Phase 3, it's, like, not even the same as what we got. So. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping they do end up splitting this Avengers movies a year apart. The way, the same way, I guess, they did. It was Infinity War Part 1, Infinity War Part 2, when they announced it, but then they changed them to two different names. And I'm hoping they sort of have that realisation of, like, well, that's probably not going to work. Let's move that. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. L- let's have some breathing room. Um, yeah, even if they are t- totally separate stories, I feel like you need you need time to breathe and time to like build uh, like hype, I guess, like to feel like yeah, I actually am excited for this. I don't you know I don't want to come out of the Kang Dynasty and be like oh well, I'm going straight back into Secret Wars. Yeah, um, it's too much. Yeah, it's too much. And I guarantee you there's a Spider Man movie before it as well because you can't just oh, have yeah. Spider Man show up in that one of those movies. There's Spider Man four before it. You would think so, probably. Hundred percent. In like... there's been a spider-man movie every two years every two years without fail even through covid we still got spider-man movies every two years 2017 2019 2021 2023 latest 2024 we're getting a spider-man 4 the latest 2024 yeah is there anything end of 2023 coming out oh just agatha uh yeah agatha and blade uh you blade yeah blade is november so i you could probably do i think you you could do it december 
2023 yeah. or December 2024. I think either would yeah. Yeah, work I agree. as a slot. Totally. Totally makes sense. Because you've just got what Fantastic Four to compete with. Who gives a fuck about that? <laughs> Everyone um, but you. No one gives a shit. It's such a fucking... <laughs> you know what? For the satisfaction of our v- viewers, Tyler, shut the fuck up. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and if you'd like to personally tell me to shut the fuck up I think you should head over to patreon.com forward slash as yes. always that's what I think definitely where you can support us and for just as little as one dollar a month you get exclusive access to the bed podcast on the internet the clubhouse podcast there are 140 episodes for you to stream right now for just as little as one dollar plus you could get it on a credits list at the end of every podcast that's this list I'm about to read right now so thank you to the great people supporting us patreon.com forward slash as always we have Ollie the Superior Ollie Baron Keen Damien the Not-So-Orange Orange Gnome Ferentino Flash Paradox King Richard the Third Albrecht Ryan Hathaway Viridian Bullsack 47 Aragon Keep us coming Gabba Pies Hashtag Make the Nice Guys too Please for the Love of Fuck Hollywood Adam Sunling Alfie Robert Andrew Big Dick 6699 I'm Ben Higgins is thankful for his stick brethren Ben Nick Clubbers BFHC Biggest fucking virgin Bodge BQ Overlord The Elder Brian Ford Call Me Daddy Callum AKA I Used To Be Thethmas Then I Took An Arrow To The Knee Christian 0210 Connor DeRose Bully In The Alley Disciple Alaric Eli Emil Catborg Redito Hacker Ethan Dean Fat Fuck Cock Fishy Furious Coco Gene Gimme Your Penis Kiko Swag Gwen Hughes Jack DG 1998 Jen B. Bennett Jake Ryan, Joe the Founder Scab, John Lang, Josh Duvillier, Josh J. Anderson, Joshua Mora, Kid Ghostly, Liam, Loden, Lucas R05, Louis de Leon, Lumis Dread, Mario5380, Master Bass, Max H, Mighty Unicorn, Nick Miller, Otico17, Epis of Mod, Brandy, Play the Rules, Radok, Rav Josh, Seth, Son of Bitch, OG Doggo, So James hates the Batman too because he kills people, Spunky Bark, Spell and Junk, The Blue Cow, Tony Walshy, and Zeppo. Thank you, Sweet Vigilance, for helping power this podcast. We also have an, as always, exclusive Patreon Discord that wow. we launched this past week. What the fuck do you mean? You're making, you're putting it behind a paywall, you motherfucker. Yeah. Well, we How just realised you? you're. There's only one rule, so we sort of changed it. So, like, we used to have a lot of rules in the old Discord, um, and in this Discord, there's only one rule, and it's don't be a cunt. So that excluded a lot of people. True. So, that's so that's really why it's behind plan. the paywall. Because if you subscribe and pay us, you're not a cunt. If you um, like, it, look. If you have a job, you have money, you have enough disposable income to give us a dollar a month, you've probably got your yeah. life together to a point yeah. where, like, you don't you have, not. you know, problems. You're probably not a cunt. You're um, probably not a cunt. You yeah. might be, but you're probably not a cunt. And we just ask you that while you're in a Discord, don't be a cunt. That's the only rule there is. Yeah. That's the yeah. only rule. It's the only rule. If I Discord, don't be a cunt. Don't be a cunt. And there might be some other bullshit rules James made up in there. I haven't there read might it. be. There might be. There um, might be a couple. Might be a few things. Yeah. But uh Yeah. But it's what it is. Um but yeah, go check it out. Thanks for watching, listening to this episode of the As Always Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh let us know in the comments what you think of, of course, all the Marvel news that's come out. Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, there's a lot mm-hmm. coming in the entertainment world, and none of it's original or new. Um but we move! Hell Thanks yeah. everyone for tuning in and we'll see you all next time. Goodbye. See you later everybody. Goodbye.